Hi, my name is Jack Dangeman, and, and thank you for inviting me to this very special meeting, uh, workshop, and planning session. Uh, thank also all of you for not only allowing me to speak, but more importantly, becoming active in your community. I think this is, this is really so exciting to me, creating your own future, owning it, building it, envisioning it, moving ahead. Uh, before I talk in substance about some of the, my work and how I think it might relate to help you, I want to start by talking about planning and decision making and how we do create the future. I mean, you and I live in, an, in two worlds. First, we live in kind of an ordinary world where things happen to us. We wake up in the morning, we go to work, we take care of our kids, we, we do our job, all of that sort of thing. And I just like to describe it as kind of a stimulus response mode of living. We, we, something shows up on our screen, we respond. This is quite natural for human beings. And whether it's uh, dangerous things, stimulus response, or ordinary things, stimulus response, we kind of live a major piece of our life that way. But you and I also live in a different world, and that I like to describe as an extraordinary world, where uh, we dream and we think and we create the future for our own personal life. I mean, we find our mate, we find our friends, we um, create living in a particular home or we create a particular job. We don't know exactly how we do this creative act, but it happens, starts happening in our brain. We imagine and then we do the things that are necessary, sometimes successfully, sometimes not, that actually creates our dreams coming into reality. I mean, you and I, live in a, in a amazing time. I mean, on one hand, technology is racing ahead and creating just amazing phenomena for in healthcare, in computing, in communications, uh, it's in robotics, it's, it's changing everything. At the same time, we're living in a time where it seems to me like the world is on fire and we are challenged with um, you know, outbreaks of violence in the Middle East and beyond, um, global climate change, uh, the world's becoming globalized and that's having implications for our, our own personal lives and also for our, our urban lives and for our nation's life and, and the world in general. And some of it's good, some of it's bad. But we are definitely challenged every day, things like Ebola breakouts or I mean, it's scary to me, and I think we all share this, this uh, concern at the global level. But we also are challenged in our own little existence in our own town, like Shreveport, uh, economic development, the need for it, uh, tax base, not enough, um, the challenges of poverty and jobs, and also just the physical maintenance of, of infrastructure. I mean, building a sustainable future for Shreveport is challenging, just no question about that. And um, so we, we all operate both in the ordinary world and extraordinary world of dreaming and thinking about what could be, but sometimes the ordinary world gets in the way and it's, it's just, just too practical to think beyond. I think, however, uh, and my sense is from talking with my parents and and others in previous generations, uh, that this is not a new thing. Uh, certainly we see it more because of communications, but it's not a new thing. Hundreds of years ago, our predecessors here in this country came to the country and they, they were both living in the ordinary world, struggling along, but they were also imagining creating a country which would, which would have the characteristics of democracy uh, different from their ordinary worlds that they came before. And they envisioned it, and they created it. They were bold and created, I mean, they really knew what citizenship was all about. They, they were creating a nation and uh, creating the cities and, and dealing with all the ordinary stuff that comes along, uh, but they were actively thinking at the same time they were doing. And look, look what happened. I mean, a, a miracle happened a whole new kind of country, a new way of living, a new economic system, a new political system. And it clearly is that kind of creative thought 
that's necessary to create a new Shreveport. Uh, it's, it's like we live in this, but we can create that. My field is geography and GIS, the technology which makes geography digital, mapping. And more recently, I've been going to back to my roots of being a designer, a geographic designer. I was trained as a landscape architect or a planner. Um, and that taught us as kids the idea of we collected data, we synthesized this data, and then we made plans. So in, in a funny way, it balanced the science side of data collection um, with the creative side of creating the future. Today, we're starting to call this field a new field called geodesign, which takes all of the digital geographic information that cities are building. And by the way, they do this GIS work for a good reason. They save money, they think, make things more efficient, they can communicate through maps to their citizens and to each other, they, uh, they make better, better decisions actually. Um, there's lots of reasons why cities, local governments build GISs. But the extraordinary thing is that this is now moving on to the web. And we're beginning to learn how to leverage all of this investment for geodesign, for creating the future. It's becoming an instrument to help planners and also help citizens participate in their city. I like to call it a GI, web GIS, a kind of new platform in local government. And this new platform has the characteristics of being open. So through web services, and technologies I don't need to go to in much detail here, the maps of cities and information are becoming alive and available for, for application development, or let's call it app development, for being able to put on my little device or on my browser and explore the maps and the data that are about my place. Imagery, um, just tabular descriptions are geo-referenced and can come alive to support better thinking by local government, but also better thinking by all of the citizens that are here. It's opening up cities. It's making it uh, uh, a more transparent city. It's open government. And ultimately where this is going is to um, say something like government is a platform for citizens. Government is a platform and this GIS technology is enabling it. Government's a platform for business in cities. Um, it's a platform for being able to have better citizen to government engagement, the sort of e-government uh, vision uh, for people being able to put into their app 311 response so they, they are able to respond to problems um, more effectively. And this new generation, this web GIS, is also supporting the ability to have people envision uh, what they want to have in their communities. Do geo design like I'd like to have this here and this here and quickly evaluate the consequences of these designs in a more public and open forum. And that I think, ladies and gentlemen, is the purpose that you have here is, is uh, envisioning and creating the future. Now, the truth is you don't really need GIS to do that. You can do it with some paper maps and some pictures and photographs. That is the design part, the thinking part. And I encourage you to do that right now. But over time, building the information platform that can support that in a rigorous way, in a more electronic way, in a faster way, uh, will be important. In the city of Los Angeles, we are doing a GIS hub project where we're taking all the data for the city, plugging it into the platform of WebGIS, and then making that platform available through a website so that small entrepreneurs can build cool apps. They can do economic development in their own city and sell those apps back to the city or have them available freely for the city. They can participate in the, the the economy of the local city in new ways. Who will build these apps? Startups, kids in schools, um, all sorts of uh, interesting characters. NGOs wanting to have access to the data, participate more in the city, design the city, create the city, create a new ecosystem. I call it a geospatial 
ecosystem for the future. This, this to me thrills me, this notion that we start to make the internet more um, interesting. Instead of just search and see some HTML pages, we start to get engaged in creating the future. Now, I always like to think about that vision, and I've done a lot of thinking about that. Is this just, you might say, Jack, that's just some vision, foolish. No, I, I don't think so. I think like the, like the web itself, this notion of bringing information to life in a visual, quantitative, analytic way, open way, will actually have a huge footprint. But it requires a few things. One of them it requires is leadership. It requires community support. That is, participants, people like yourselves, that are genuinely interested in creating a better future. It requires how are we going to use the technology, not just the technology. Technology has a kind of agenda of itself, but its application is what excites me. It excited me as a student. It excites me still today. It requires a couple of other things. It requires doing the work. Um, actually, in my town, doing the work, planting trees is what, I, is what I'm fond of doing. Uh, it isn't that exciting sounding. You know, I want to make the city more interesting by planting trees. But over my lifetime, gradually in my city, a lot of trees have been planted. And I can get the satisfaction of driving by and looking at them and enjoying it. But the rest of the city takes my little practical work and, and gets off on it. Other people have started what we call family service, a little community group that focuses on people that don't have homes or don't have jobs right now. This is a totally volunteer organization that's been in my Oregon city for a hundred years. And it's made our city more rich as a result, caring and supportive. It's not about charity or giveaway, it's about building the city's fabric that actually makes it work. And whether it's in education or jobs or in, in building better infrastructure, it, my town is about a lot of volunteerism and participation. And GIS and geodesign are, are part of that. But doing the work yourself and having a spirit of collaboration, a spirit of, of creating the future, a spirit of being extraordinary, not just ordinary. These are the things that I think are, are uh, very important. And uh, so thank you for this opportunity uh, for sharing a little bit about what I do. And hopefully uh, this will support you in, in doing what you want to do. I'm sure it will. Thank you.